Well, uh, today um, I was arrested by the PSNI and what has to be one of the most absurd, uh, ridiculous and quite frankly legally questionable policing operations that anybody's likely to come across. Um, I've just been released around 8 o'clock tonight, so the first opportunity I've got, naturally I'm, I'm here to give an account uh, of what has happened today, just despite the fact that, that one particular complete idiot who, who must think everybody come up lagging in the bubble has spent his uh, afternoon and late evening messaging journalists encouraging them to pursue the story as if it's some big secret so to that idiot you know we we know uh, exactly what you've been up to uh, it doesn't come as any surprise idiots will be idiots but anyway the first opportunity that i have got naturally i i want to address uh, this issue and i will start with the most serious issue of all here before we even get into to the legal nonsense that this is all about. So I was uh, arrested today in relation to supplying uh, doormen. Uh, to do this they searched uh, three premises uh, with a vast amount of TSG units and officers and the uh, SIA apparently, so they say, from England, which uh, the, these were a number of officers who were Englishmen, I'm not entirely convinced they were actually of the SIA. Uh, so this very serious charge. Uh, they, they bring me to the police station. Uh, there is a dispute over whether the, the effect of uh, Order and Council was actually made uh, to bring this legislation into effect uh, within Northern Ireland, so that's one matter where we feel they may have been unlawfully detained. But despite that, uh, the PSNI then, along with, with who they say are the SIA, uh, spend six or seven hours with me locked in a cell doing absolutely nothing. They then bring me in the interview, and the interview tape is here. It's here, uh, and tomorrow I will publish it online for everybody and anybody to listen to this. What they've started doing to these now is they put passwords on them. Um, a number of years ago, I published my interview tapes online. They were very annoyed about this, so what they now do is they password detect these uh, 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 to try and, and send a password to a solicitor to try and stop people publishing them. But as soon as I get the, the, the password, this will be published. Any journalist who wants to come and listen to this tape, I think you'll find it uh, absolutely astonishing. Uh, and in the course of this interview, they put no evidence to me whatsoever. They asked me to identify uh, a number of laptops out of my uh, a place I work out of that they belong to me. And I said, would you like me to explain how uh, this, this, this business that you're, you're allegedly investigating works? Would you like me to explain how no, no offence here has been committed? They said, no, we don't want you to explain anything. He says, well, you, do you not want me to give an account? Are you not going to put any evidence to me? No. And this is all here. This is all on this tape. No evidence put to me. Uh, no allegations put to me. Absolutely nothing. So essentially what they done was they came to my home, another address, and a place that I work out of. They seized a plethora of material, some of which uh, is protected under journalistic privilege, some of which are consultation notes uh, were legal uh, with my solicitors. Seized all of this in just a mad... Uh, to all to grab all sorts of information. Now we have challenged them uh, and made clear to them that they can't access this information, uh, that an independent counsel is now going to have to come in and assess what information they can actually unseal uh, because uh, under PACE, which I was arrested under, journalistic material is actually a protected uh, category. You can't seize journalistic material. Uh, the PS and I have seized it, uh, so I've made very clear that it's not to be unopened and they've agreed with this. Uh, until uh, the process can take place whereby an independent person has to come in and assess it they may very well have to go before the judge to see if they're even allowed uh, to look at it but the mo we then get to the most bizarre part of all of this so the officers then say well we're going to the Alicia I says well that's a surprise and he says uh, with a number of conditions I says well I'm sorry I'm not accepting any conditions because I'm not being charged uh, and they says, well, we're placing you on, it's called plea charge bail. It's when they've no evidence to charge somebody and they want to bring them back and carry out further investigations. So evidently they had no evidence to charge me, they didn't put any evidence to me, so they couldn't charge me. So they said that, well, we're placing conditions upon you anyway. And I've got the conditions here, and you won't believe this, but I've got here to show you. And the conditions here, no communicating directly or indirectly with, it's two named individuals, you'll see I've blacked them out. Uh, so these individuals are simply people involved in the business. No communication of any kind regarding the investigation by any means whatsoever to any person or the public at large except for legal representations. So here we have a case where nobody has been charged, so it's not a live case. It's a very 
basic legal fact, you cannot prejudice a case that is not live because there is no charge. A, ca a case only becomes live. You can only prejudice a case once there has been a charge, once it is through the court. This is merely a, a nonsical investigation. So they say to me, I have to accept the condition, but I am not permitted to discuss what happened to me today. I am not to, uh, permitted to discuss uh, the legal nonsense of this investigation. I think about that. What that would essentially mean is no journalist in the country would ever be able to write about anything in relation to any criminal matter because they might prejudice a charge that might transpire down the line. Absolutely insane. So I refused to accept these conditions and I said I'm not signing these bail conditions, I'm not abiding by them uh, and I want to be taken before the judge and I want the judge to assess the legality of this. I also want the judge to rule on uh, the, the provisions of the legislation in regards to why I've been unlawfully detained. They said no. And I says, well, we're in a bit of a conundrum because I am refusing to sign these conditions. I'm not accepting them. I will breach them as soon as I leave here. Uh, and you do not have enough evidence to charge me. Uh, and they said, well, we're just going to release you anyway. So what they done was they gave me this piece of paper. You can see it here. And I've written on it. Here's the conditions where I'm meant to sign. I refuse all conditions and I request I be brought before the judge. I do not accept bail. You also see on the front here, I refuse these conditions and want to go to a judge. This is the basis upon which the PS now released me tonight. These conditions, which I have said, I am not signing. I don't want bail. And they still released me and they, they expect me to buy by these. Now, here we get in to the most malicious part of all of this. So while it's the PS and I on one hand are saying to the alleged subject of an investigation, you cannot talk to any person about what's happened to you today. You can't tell anybody. Mr Bobby Singleton of the Paramilitary Crime Task Force then puts out a statement and alleges that this arrest was in connection uh, with the East Belfast UVF in an attempt to try and smear me further, to try and bring in some what they would term terrorist element to all of this, to try and blacken me with what they would term and what they're trying to put forward as paramil paramilitary crime. So how can you have the subject of an investigation, which where there's been no charges, banned from telling anybody about it? But the PSNI are allowed to issue statements and propaganda full of lies. And it's lies because I question the PSNI on this tape, as you will hear tomorrow, who's involved in this? Who's running this investigation? They said on this, the SIA are taking the lead on this. The police are just supporting this. Yet the PS now have put a statement out saying the Paramilitary Crime Task Force were the leading this. Now, what they also done was they briefed journalists and they give unauthorised briefings, briefings sorry, to journalists to put and push my name forward. I know which officer did it and I know who they did it to. They done it to a number of people. I also know that they asked the BBC and some other journalists about potentially this week going with them to this search. They were going to take them with them to this search about the SIA. So there's also a question for the PSNI who seem to be awful concerned about people revealing uh, what they're doing and, and how the paramilitary crime task force are conducting themselves. But by the same token, by the same token, they, they think that they can sneakily brief journalists uh, with malicious stories. They can put out statements which, if anything, was going to prejudice a jury or prejudice an investigation, a statement alleging Sunday was was essentially linked to what is a, a, a prescribed organisation. Surely that would uh, that would prejudice a trial, but yet it's me, the subject of all of this, that they say they can't speak. Well, I am speaking and I will be revealing everything about this and continuing to do so. So any journalists, uh, and a final point, Mr Singleton also said as well, they'd seized a, 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 a BB gun and camouflage material. Uh, the list is here. To my home address. There's no BB gun and there's no camouflage seized from my house. So perhaps Mr. Shingleton wants to go back and look at that as well. Uh, and you know, Mr. Shingleton and these people think that they can have a free hand to promote their narrative, to blacken people, to smear people, and to essentially prejudice trials. That's what they're trying to do. Uh, and they think everybody is going to have to sit on their hands. Uh, and aren't going to respond in the media, aren't going to put their side of the story across. Well, no, I'm sorry, I don't think so. If we want to have a debate about this in the media, here I am. All journalists have my number, and since the police themselves have pushed this into the public domain, I will be releasing 
this publicly on the internet so everybody can listen to exactly what nonsense this is and how much this is really just all about trying to get my computers and trying to get other things which I believe contain journalistic material. And everybody, any journalist, contact me in the morning. You can see the search sheets. You can see what was seized. You can see the names of the officers that seized it. And you can see this attempt to make sure that I'm not allowed to talk about a matter for which there hasn't been any charges. So uh, we move forward. I am keen uh, and very happy. Um, I will be uh, contactable from the morning. I'm, I'm very happy to speak to any journalists, to give an account of this to anybody, any media whatsoever. Feel free to contact me. Uh, and if you want a copy of the tape, uh, which the police are so desperate to hide, uh, you can also have that uh, with no issue. So as I say, we will we will pick this up uh, tomorrow, but if, if Bobby Singleton uh, and the PSNI think they're going to get all this their own way, uh, then they're not. Uh, and, and they can also know about unauthorised illegal briefings that they're giving to journalists, that uh, they're going to be answering for that too. Uh, and in regard to the idiots that spent the afternoon getting all excited, uh, sending messages to journalists, uh, asking them, oh, could somebody please report this? You know, uh, such idiots had any billions. They might have understood the first opportunity I get, I would report it myself. Uh, so, but as I say, people like that aren't even worth, uh, you know, worth uh, talking about. Some people's playing chess and they're still playing checkers. So, uh, listen, uh, we are where we are and we will pick this up tomorrow.